Okay, so getting back into our coverage over the Dawn of X era of X-Men comics, we actually pick up with giant size X-Men Jean Grey and Emma Frost, or Emma Frost and Jean Grey. However it is, this is giant size X-Men time. Now, usually when it comes to Marvel comics, when they do a giant size issue, it really means, hey, this book is going to be very important for a character or a team. And right now, it's for the X-Men. Because remember, when the X-Men got popular or came back into Marvel Comics, it was Giant Size X-Men number one. And then Chris Claremont took over, wrote the X-Men for almost 20 years, and made the X-Men so popular. And so this is Jonathan Hickman saying, why not do the same thing all over again? But this time, the first giant size X Men book will be Jean Grey and Emma Frost. It's going to focus on them. Now, with that being said, though, we pick up with some children kind of playing around. They're having a good time. It's showing us that Kokoa is a great nation and everybody loves it. But then the kids find something. And what they find is somebody who looks like they're dying. And that person is Storm. And that right there is scary and very huge. Now, the rest of the book is actually textless. And so it's Jonathan Hickman telling you, if you want to understand the complete story of what is happening in this giant size issue, look at the images and try to piece what he is telling you throughout the images of this book. Now, with all that being said, we pick up with Jean Grey and Emma Frost arriving to a certain location on Kakoa. Now, of course, they are confronted by Cyclops and Wolverine, where, of course, they kind of greet them, hug them, or kiss them, and they continue on. Now, with that being said, let's not forget, there is some bad blood between Jean Grey and Emma Frost, and a lot of that bad blood comes from Cyclops, because once Jean Grey was gone and removed from Marvel Comics, Cyclops went on to date Emma Frost. And of course, when Jean Grey came back, that whole love for Emma Frost went away. Now, with that being said, with Kakoa, the big game is for all mutants to come together and work together. Now, with that being said, you right now have Jean Grey and Emma Frost going into the mind of Storm to figure out what is wrong with her. Because when the kids found her, it looked like she was dying, but she was not talking. She's in some kind of coma. And so it's Jean Grey and Emma Frost trying to figure out what is wrong with her. Now, once Jean Grey and Emma Frost are able to enter the mind of Storm, this is the moment you have Jonathan Hickman really shows that when it comes to a character's mind, their mind is basically set on how they grew up and when it came to storm she grew up in africa where she was praised as a god and so with that her mind is kind of like a virtual not a virtual but a mental version of africa because everything she lived through everything she had experienced it was in Africa. Now, once Charles Xavier came by and took her away and she joined the X-Men, the rest of her experience in life was more of the world. But for the first 20, 25 years of her life, it was in Africa. And so while Storm, a uh, Storm, sorry, while Jean Grey and Emma Frost are traveling through the mind of Storm, they are experiencing her mind. Her mind being a mental version of Africa. Now, they do run into different kinds of enemies. But of course, it's Emma Frost and Jean Grey being able to overcome those threats. Because it's also Jonathan Hickman telling us Jean Grey and Emma Frost are two of the most powerful psychics in all of Marvel Comics. Not just a mutant race but all of Marvel Comics. And that is huge to say because these two characters were once rivals, but now they're using their powers coming together to actually help out a friend because Emma Frost and Storm have become friends 
thanks to the Marauders comics, especially with the death of Kitty Pride. Now, with all that being said, this book, this video is going to be short because it's just Jonathan Hickman letting the artist just show his work off. And also Jonathan Hickman showing how three characters are really powerful. Storm is powerful, but not in her mind. But when it comes to Jean Grey and Frost, oh yeah, they're powerful no matter outside someone's mind or in someone's mind. Now, with all that being said, they're able to actually find Storm, but when they do find Storm, she's in an egg. Now, with her being inside this egg, it's Jonathan Hickman kind of telling us that this is how mutants come back to life. Because remember, we saw this. When it came to Jonathan Hickman, he introduced the five. And the five are basically five mutants who live on Kakoa who have the ability to bring someone back to life. Meaning that once you die, they're able to bring you back to life in a new body. But that new body has to grow. And when they do grow, they stay in an egg. And right now, you have Storm in an egg. She's growing in there. It seems like in her own mind, she's growing a new body, which is weird, which is strange. But then you have Jean Grey and Emma Frost able to break the egg open, which of course, Storm is alive. And so it's kind of like Jonathan Hickman saying she was not creating a new body in her mind, but maybe a new mind for her body. We don't know. But... As soon as she comes out of this egg, you have Jean Grey, Emma Frost walk over to her. And when they do, they're able to kind of break apart her skin in her mind, which is creepy. But even creepier is there is a timer on her forehead. And this timer is predicting something. And we have no idea what the countdown's for. Could it be Storm? or someone else on Kakoa Island. And so it's very concerning. But of course, Jonathan Hickman does leave us on a cliffhanger, but he does tell us what this timer is and what is the countdown about. Now, with that being said, you do have Jean Grey and Emma Frost walk out the room they were in when they entered the Mine of Storm, where of course, they are confronted by Cyclops and Wolverine once again. Now, this is a very huge moment because once they do walk out, you do have Jean Grey and Emma Frost tell Cyclops and Wolverine what is going on and that basically Storm is going to die in 30 days because the children of the vault gave her some kind of machine virus. Now, the X-Men have only confronted the children of the vault in Jonathan Hickman's run in two books, issue number one of X-Men and issue number five of X-Men. And so in those two books, somewhere, Storm got a virus and that virus is killing her. But this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions on books I should read, well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know your suggestion could be a future video down the road. Later, guys.